How is it going, viewers? If you are watching this, that means that you have probably watched the final GTA San Andreas video, which is end of the line that I posted a couple days ago. As stated, I film these video or record these videos um, months in advance. And so I don't know exactly if I've got the Xbox Series X, if I did an unwrapping video or unboxing video of it, then I have it and I'm probably playing on that and recording and possibly producing more awesome videos for various games. This is a Skyrim video and it's a walkthrough of a crypt, Valthum, where you find a mask. And it's a decent video. It's one where, um, yeah, you can potentially screw yourself. And I will discuss that in the walkthrough of the video. So let's get on with Valthum. Valthum lies west of Cradlestone Tower and Bard's Leap and Lost Valley Redoubt, which I did a video walkthrough of, and there is an ogre cave somewhere. Now, once you enter Valthum, you enter into the vestibule. Leave, stranger. Evil stirs in this place. I fear for the security of the very land if it should break free. We stand at the tomb of Hednorak, who has been dead for many generations. I fear, however, that his return may be at hand. I have been holding him here. While he regains strength, however, I am fading. By now, I can barely contain his power, much less defeat him if he awakens. But with the help of a living champion, I may be able to succeed. You would do this? Three vessels in the tomb below hold the power to vanquish at Norak. Before anything else, we need those. Bring them to me, but be careful, mortal. They are guarded by Hvnorak's minions. They will stop at nothing to see their master return. After talking to Valdar, you find out that this is the tomb of Hvnorak, a very powerful, um, magic user, lich king, dragon priest type guy. In fact, this is where you get one of the masks of the dragon pr priests, and that's a separate quest. Now, I'm going to switch to the dragon bow bone, or dragon bone bow, yeah. And I don't know if I really want to do this sneaky sneaky, maybe I'm going to do this more... I'm looking around this area because there's always hidden things sometimes. And you really need to get first person view to see stuff in Skyrim. If I decide to go sneaky sneaky, nah, I'm going to look at my shouts. And this is actually one of the things that can screw you is unrelenting force if you use it in a certain area. But I'm going to switch to the bone warhammer and dragon bone warhammer and charge it up for attack because you use electrical against magic opponents this is the main tomb of have or have norak or whatever and it's pretty barren there's really nothing around nothing hidden i can tell you that from experience this is the crypt where he's buried in, and there's these statues 
this Diaz with a throne. And what you do is once you find the blood or vessels containing the blood of have Norak, you got to sit in the throne and fill the the um, bowl up there with the blood, and have Norak will rise. But I'm getting ahead of things now. The third person view is how I prefer to fight when I'm using melee weapons. You come down these stairs and you enter the temple. You first deal with. Step on that, and up oh, there's a Draugr, Draugr, and we'll see what he has. Re restless Draugr, just some uh, gold, and this guy attacks, and I'm going to fight against him here, and one punch, he's down. So he is, a again, a restless Draugr. They're not very powerful. And then you come in here. And you always sh should search burial urns and look in areas like this because there's always some form of hidden thing. Now, I'm going to search through this and then move on to the next level. I'm going to go to this wooden door here, and it's barred. This will be the door you exit when you complete the mission. And now, heading down this way, uh, you come upon, you see a lich creature kind of disappearing like a ghost, and that's Havnorak. Again, he just disappears. You want to go to search mode, and it's always good to be kind of in first person in search mode, but you have some imp stole here and a apothecary satchel. Yeah, when you do search, it is usually better to be first person. That way you get a better view and you can take stuff. But now I'm going to search this area out. And kind of explain this level here where it can be kind of dangerous. When you're done finding things, you walk down the path here and you don't want to step on that steel grate. I'm going to try and jump over to this other area. There might be something there. Um, give it a good run and jump and do. No. What you don't want to do is step on that iron grate. It's a trap. So there's some Draugr here. You got to fight them. One is a Draugr Death Lord. And again, you fight using electrical because it depletes their magic. And then this guy, real quick takedown, boom, wham. And now I'm going to search them for what they got. You can hear rustling when you enter this room because that steel grate will open up and drop you into a bunch of spiders. And I'll show you where the spiders are after I search these draugers and search this area and take stuff out of this chest. Gold, ebony sword, yeah. And let's see what's in here. Uh, gold. Potion, scroll, boots, I'll leave the boots. Not worth carrying. Now, that grate, again, is a trap. And if you come over here and you escape the trap and the spiders, you'll come up into here. Now, I'm going to search this area around here. Nothing really worth looking for here. 
except the burial urns, some quick gold. And now I'm going to go downstairs here and open up the door that's here. And it's expert level. Again, my lock picking skills are magically enhanced. So, yeah, it's not that bad. And now fight some spiders. This Draugr has the key you can use to unlock the door if you were trapped and fell into the graded area. Now, the spiders, frostbite venom, you can sell to certain people. It's pretty good. Uh, if you need to, you can discard it, but it doesn't weigh that amount much as far as overall contributing to encumbrance. Egg sack, egg spider, spider egg or whatever, worth mat using for, how shall I say, crafting potions. Take down this spider and the venom. And now the door here. And that would lead to the iron grate. I'm going to fast forward to something a little more interesting here. Okay, I'm going to open up the grate and take a look down it. As you can see, there's that pit that we were just recently in. And you'd have to fight your way out. Not that hard of a battle. Now, continuing the, on down here, there's this area where there's some pretty decent treasure and loot. Um, knapsack, immortal blood. Potion of healing, gold necklace, boots and clothes, not worth, worth taking. I'll take the woodcutter axe, and the iron mace isn't worth anything. Then take a look around here. Leather strips are always good, good for crafting. And then there is some garbage here. Mm, looks like a lot of garbage here. Ah, wheat is always good for making potions and leather strips. So far, nothing of any real value except, ah, the book Reed Withers Shins. And restoration is up to 31. Again, there's some potatoes and leather strips. Mmm, potatoes. But nothing of any real value. Now, one of the things I want to show is... I'm going to switch to the uh, Dragon Bowl, Dragon Bone Bowl, and I'm going to shoot one of these hanging things. Those are filled with um, oil, and they're supposed to be a trap. You can get burned, but if you're smart about it, you use that against your enemies. And the next area I will show you how effective that is and we're going to walk over to the not this room I'm going to turn around and I'm going to shoot another one of these just to show you and once it burns out yeah I mean you can drop them on enemies and use that this is going to be interesting when I show you um you're hidden so walk over to the door here and open the door. Don't even enter. Open the door. And you see those? See that oil, that pink stuff? That's oil. Fire and set this off. And you're going to take down enemies. There's some skeever and a draugr that you end up taking down. Let the fire burn out here. If you step on that pad, you'll... Activate the fire stuff, and there's a, again two skeevers and a draugr who would attack you and trigger the fire, which does more damage. Now, over here is a secret room which you'll be able to enter 
once you get through here. And again, I'm going to fast forward to the next interesting part. Okay, this is where we find one of the baddies. And he's a Draugr, Death Lord. He's wondering where I'm shooting from. He's looking for me. Let's see if I can take him down. And up, oh, he shoves past me somehow. And damn it, I can't get a beat on him. Missed him. So now I got to run after him. And I'm going to switch to the Warhammer. And take him down. Gonna beat him up for making me work for this. And he tries to shout, but yep, I take him down. And let's see what he has. Gold, ebony arrow, and an ebony war axe. Excellent. Lovely stuff. Now, over back where he came from, there is the first um vial that you need here you just take the opaque vessel and now you have one of three and you got to find the other two now this dungeon is circular and it should lead you through all where you need to go as far as getting the vessels like i mentioned before you can screw yourself so i'm going to fast forward to the next event I'm going to switch to the local map of this tomb, and as you see the current location, the hidden passage is around here, and you can get to it by walking through this area here, which we are now getting to. Ooh, cheese. I love wheels of cheese. I picked those up. Yeah, there's this guy. He's kind of annoying. And Draugr Scourge, he's pretty tough. But I'll take him down, and let's take a look at what's on the table here. Some tundra cotton. Somebody is, he's got some gold. Ooh, someone just shouted at me. Time to have words with him, and shout back, and we send him flying. The Draugr Death Lord. I'm going to take these wheels of goat cheese, and this, and this. And nothing else, and go fight these bad guys here. That guy goes down quickly. You tend to be a little more immune to the shouts as you get higher armor level. And this guy, I'm going to fight down and take him down with a nice sweep and a bang, smash to the head. Let's see what he has. Gold and an axe. Yippee. And now for this door, I'm not going to open quite yet because there are other areas I want to explore. Okay, over here it looks like some sort of medieval torture area with a bunch of skeletons. And yeah, nothing here. Just hanging around skeletons and... There's the burial urns, of course, you have to search. And this burial urn right here, the coffins are usually empty. There looks like to be a storage room here with some burial urns and some other stuff. I'll search this out a little bit and fast forward to the next event. A lot of what I'm fast forwarding through is just boring stuff. This activated handle will open a secret door that will take you to that secret room where there was the big fireball and stuff, or you saw when you went through the room with the big fireball and stuff, and this is the secret room, and that's the view of the skeevers where, again, you use the fire to kill them. You got some nice stuff here. Search the chest, uh, healing potions, staff of storm atronach, whatever. Uh, Draugr here. Uh, what's he got? Let's see. Ooh, gold. Well, taking from the dead is not good, but hey, they don't need it, right? What do they need gold for? And these are 
apothecary ingredients, great for selling or creating potions. Um, some potions here, again, necessary and you can sell. But now I'm going to look at this. Now, if you look at the ingredients, if you don't know what the ingredient does, you can taste it and it will do some damage. But I'm going to fast forward from this point to the next interesting part because if you're playing Skyrim, you understand you taste ingredients in order to get a small minor effect and know what they do. So again, let's go with fast forward here. Okay, now we're at the iron door that I had uh, not opened. And again, I'm going to open it up. And what is behind it? Uh, a closet. Oh, wonderful, with books. I'm going to fast forward through this because there really wasn't much of anything of real interest here. Okay, back to the main area of the dungeon, and we're going to go down this area to continue the quest, and it is the Valthum Catacombs. In the catacombs, there's a lot less walking around. It's kind of a more linear dungeon, but this is where you can kind of uh, screw up if you use unrelenting force. Now, these burial urns will tr not trigger anything but once you open up the chest it triggers giant spiders yeah a lot of fun to bash and here comes the giant spider and her two little other spiders let's go bash some spiders <laughs> Okay, the spiders have egg sacs, and spider eggs are really wonderful for uh, making things. And frostbite, venom, blah, blah, I think I've been poisoned, but I don't have any curing for poison. Just resist. So, I'm going to search around this area. In fact, I'm going to just fast forward to the next event even though this is a fairly linear dungeon and I still explore the areas a little more deeply to find hidden stuff. This is the next part of the catacombs. You pull this chain, open this door or grate, and right away you get a Draugr right who tries to run away, or actually does run away, and you take down this Draugr, and if you pursue this Draugr white or right, he's going to attack you. And you step on that, and that activates those axe blades, so you don't want to do that. And you run through, and you got to follow this guy, and he leads you to a Draugr Death Knight, who, yep, there's the Draugr Death Knight, or Death Lord. And you got to battle this guy down and take him down and search the burial urn and go find the Draugr here, take some gold. Hey, every little bit of gold helps. And let's see what this guy has. Uh, gold and a ancient battle axe. But then, oh, there's another Draugr. Take that guy down. And I don't need the iron shield. These things suck. Weight, value, armor rating, eh, 
they're not bad to start with, but you're better off with higher level shields. And if you haven't figured that out now, well, there's the Draugr he's hiding, but I'm going to go around behind him and, oop, there's the second Draugr Death Lord. You're fighting these Death Lords, you're close to the vial that you need or the whatever container. And we're going to take down this Draugr here. Finally, should just beat on him more for being such a chicken, but that's okay. I'll take the bone meal. And you pull this and you open it up to the next part where, hey, there's this guy. And what you don't want to do is what I just did, which is shout, which then knocks the urns or the uh, whatever vial somewhere and it gets lost. And yeah, stupid me, I'm going to regret this, but you'll see in a certain point where I will have to come back here because I don't know where the blood vessel thing is. And now that I'm watching this video, I actually see where it is, but I'm not paying too well of attention. You want to grab these soul gems because guess what? They will scorch you in the next passage that you got to walk through. And I'm looking for the... Yeah, like I said, I'm watching this video now and I see exactly where I should have looked to pick up the vial and I'm overlooking it. Oh God, I'm killing myself watching this. But I'll fast forward on to the next event here. Okay, now this is the area. Yep, you're getting shouted at by another Draugr. Death Lord, as they're called. And, well, time to take this guy down and continue on through this battle. The final battle is going to be a real, real pain. And you got this other Death Lord here. And you can take them one on one. They're pretty easy to take down in some ways. If you're a relatively high level character with some really awesome weapons, otherwise, you're going to want to have a lot of healing potions. And this is just, I'm going to search through here. And hopefully there's some more gold here. And yeah, like I said, I fast forward a lot and I'm sorry for that because I do a lot of searching and it tends to drag out the video. If you want to search and really scour a dungeon, yeah, don't hit that trip gate there. But there's nothing around here. And again, like I said, I tend to search more and it drags things out. But I'm going to hit this guy and take him down. A little gold there. And here we have the final battle. And, or not quite the final battle. Again, I'm going to fast forward because I like to search. Okay, now, ooh. Time to battle. This guy, he conjures a frost atronach, take him down, take this scourge down, and once you go across this bridge, yeah, I love those kill shots. You're going to encounter, ooh, spell tomb. You're going to encounter the uh, death lord. I believe, and I'm not going to take the hide helmet. I'm going to search this guy. Ooh, Dwarven Great Sword. Yep, the Death Lord. And again, always use electrical when you attack. Seems like everything here is magical based, so you want to deplete their magic. And let's search this guy. Honed Great Sword. 
And again, I'll fast forward a little bit. I know it drives people a little crazy, but I do like to explore and search. And again, it drags out the video. Oh, lovely. More spiders. Well, I can take them out pretty easily. And there's, yeah, smash them. There is this iron claw. And if you look around, these things are going to hurt you. So you just grab the claw, step back, and you're not flambéed. You can try and get the spiders in there and grab the claw and roast the spiders, but it's a little difficult to do. I'm going to look for, mm, there you go, the iron claw, and I'm going to zoom in on it. And that tells you the pattern. Dragon, hawk, wolf. And when you go to that door to unlock it, you just follow that pattern. Now that the flames have stopped, and you look, top one is going to be dragon, and then the next one is going to be hawk, which you got to spin through them. This sucks. Anyway, hawk and then wolf. And once you get this open, you know you're getting toward a big deal, and you activate the lock, and the door opens. I didn't fast forward because it's a very short walk to this area where you have the major objective and these guys are going to beat the crap out of me. I'm going to have to, yeah, there's at least two of them beating on me and I'm going to have to start healing real quick, which means get to the potions here and I'm going to, all the healing potions that I have, um, let's see, use all the little healing potions and start attacking. And, oh, there are three Draugr Death Lords. Yeah, these guys are going to beat me up. I'm going to let this whole fight play out here. That was actually exciting. I mean, the problem is with all the shouting going on, you could kind of screw yourself by knocking the vial that contains the blood or whatever that you need off somewhere, and you got to search for it. And that's why when I was in the catacombs, I thought, oh man, I just screwed myself. But having looked at the video, I realized I overlooked where the vial was. Yeah, it got bounced around, and I will return to the catacombs once I get this vial. And the thing is, if the gates are still up here, it's a good sign because the vial didn't get knocked off the pedestal. If the vial got knocked off the pedestal with all the shouting, then the gates would have opened, or vessel, not vial. And now the master treasure chest here, you get a word wall of uh, power word, life, aura, whisper, and in the master chest, gold, spell tomb, battle axe of scorching, circlet of alteration, and studded armor, which I'm going to leave. And now I'm going to fast forward to where you get to Valthum, and I realize, oh crap, I probably need to get the other vessel. Mm -hmm. 
At this point, I realized I had screwed myself, and now I have to go all the way back to the Valthum catacombs in order to, um, well, you know, find the other vessel, and maybe it's lying around on the ground somewhere. So again, I'm going to fast forward real quick through all of this. This is where the second vessel should be. The problem with shouting is it sends it flying somewhere. And it's not around here. And again, I noticed it watching this video and I see it in first person view right here. It's even possible for it to get blasted through a wall and you can never find it. And well, you gotta start the whole mission over and it's an extensive mission. So I will fast forward to the final part of this. I just did some fast forwarding and a quick transition. Now you see the Valdar guy and approach him. You found the vessels. I was worried that I had sent you to your death. In life. Have Norak drained his own blood from his body. His goal was to transfer his power back into himself after death, becoming a powerful lich. The vessels contain that very blood. Empty them, and you remove any chance he has of regaining his former powers. Very well. Empty the vessels into the sconce near the throne. Then sit in the throne. When you have done so, I will unbind Havnorak. He will awaken in a weakened state. But the Lich is still to be reckoned with. Be ready. Well, you heard what you have to do. So get up on this Diaz here and jump up and activate the sconce, you dump the blood in there, and then you sit down and watch the show. <laughs> Defeat Havnorak. This guy blasts you with a lot of lightning, He's a lot easier to take down than three Draugr Death Lords, I can tell you that. Now let's see what this guy has here. He has the Bone Meal Flawless Ruby Gold have Norak mask and have Norak's staff. Now the mask makes you immune to disease and poison, but you can do that pretty much by enchanting a helmet or a ring or something. Thank you, hero. Now I may finally rest. Take of Norak's iron mask. It may be of use to you and serve as some reward for your feet here. Have Norak is dead and Valdar disappears. And the quest is complete. Not only do you get a dragon word, but you get a nifty mask and a staff and all kinds of fun stuff. And the best thing to do is go to Solitude and sell all the crap off. Now, once you get into the vestibule here, you see Voldar's skeleton. Grab the ancient North Norse, yeah, Nord helmet because you can build yourself some really neat armor if you get some ancient Nord armor. And I'm going to apply the level up to the health and get 10 more health here. Once I get it to 300, I'll bring up the stamina. 
Let's see, where do I want to apply the perk point? The enchanting is there, smithing is there, heavy armor, mm, two-handed. Let's take a look at two-handed here. Barbarian, champion, blah, 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 skull crusher. Everything else is up there. Um, sweep. Yeah, so I'm going to try this again. Uh, I haven't played in a while, so my skills on the controls are a little wonky. And let's take a look. Our alchemy, nah. Illusion, do None of the magic stuff here. So I guess it's going to be heavy armor, and let's see. Um, juggernaut, yep, I can increase that, and boom. Now armor is even better, and well-fitted, tower strength, matching set. Got to get 100 in order to reflect the blows. I'm going to leave into Skyrim and get back to um, Solitude to store the stuff or sell it. But, hey, that's just kind of uh, boring. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by.